Hi, welcome back to uh, Singers Back From The Dead. Uh, this is number five. Um, basically, um, I've given this a very good clean on, on both sides, steam cleaned it and also uh, got wire wool. And if you notice now that you've actually got gunmetal colour instead of that horrible brown which is basically three in one, spinning an absolute treat now. Uh, one, one way that I do clean uh, the inside is get a pair of tweezers or something and wire wall, you pop the wire wall in there and you turn and you follow that cam round so actually cleaning the inside of here because this is where the, the cam moves up and down and you want as much free movement as possible um, I'm going to replace now the, the rising bar there and what I'll do is on the little bit of bearing there I'll put some oil and it's the proper singer stuff not three in one or grease or anything like that you have to get the right stuff to move the cam to the rear there's a little on there where you right at the back there you thread that in there like so and the cam should or the bearing should I say should just engage with a bit of a waggle I think and a good day. Sometimes a bit fiddly. that was just totally full of milk. What I would do is then is oil all that area. Really what I should have done is oiled all that in there first and they also have the screw there but I'm sure there's plenty of oil in there. Turning round to the front now. Now I'll take this one a lot slower than last time. Zoom in a little bit more. As you can see, that's now absolutely spotless in there, totally clean. It's been cleaned with chemicals and it's also been steam cleaned out, so all the oil and all the old muck has been removed. I've um, used wire wool on the disc there, and you can clearly see the timing mark. If you were to strip this down any further, that is totally imperative. That if you take that off you've got to align the timing mark on there but that's a totally different kettle of fish and that is for really people who know what they're doing with them because uh, if you get anything wrong with the timing mark it just will not work right so first of all that's been cleaned with paraffin and uh, with a wire wall and that's come up very nicely now I then get the uh, there and I have to make certain which side this goes and the, the thing about this is that actually the small one a little bit of wire on the top and if you remember and the bottom is going into both sides and a little down the rod as well and if you remember the difficulty I had in moving this to now that's absolutely perfect. So, what I do is I raise the bar and may hold that and help put somewhere clean. And also, this fits around the bearing 
this rotating bearing here so that fits on there like so, so we've got quite a large one that's that's got oil on it now let's make sure it's plenty on yeah more than enough oil on there which then fits into there this part here fits in the side there's a groove in inside there which you need oil on there as well oil slightly on both sides of another can and you fit this is the fiddly part yeah. and you fit that in there and then the rod goes in like so the small hole facing it because that's where the screw goes in and you take this down to the screw all there you then put the small screw inside Not an easy shot. Now alternatively if you have any trouble with that, I put the bigger screw into there which will basically bite on the rod. I'm using hollow ground screwdriver again gives you a perfect fit. Now that should hold the rod I think. Yeah. Seems to slightly line up that hole again. Tighten that. Tighten the larger one. And any lock that should rise and fall perfectly, which it now does. And you're starting to become into business with all this. So then you get the presser flock. Parts again, similar to the other one, but that fits into that part there. There's an actual recess there in that part which goes up and down the press of foot. 
on the bar I haven't removed so I know if it's gone too far or too high and as you can see there we have got a line there and got a line there so it's just a matter of popping that one there make sure it's in some form of alignment for the actual that's a foot itself. You just may have to move that around from time to time because that's now out of alignment. I just loosen it slightly and then the presser foot is straight on the actual head of the sewing machine. That's that. in <clears throat> top goes in that's all been cleaned out piece of oil goes in on the top screw down like so just give that a little bit of a tighten Considering that when you see part one, nothing is moving, and now it's still in business. All you then have to do is just sling the rest of it back together again, and I'll show you that in part six. Thank you very much. Bye now.